Let's talk homestead strike. So this is a really crucial strike in the Gilded Age here. So intro here that this is a total battle for control here. This idea that America is evolving and is it gonna come at the expense of workers? Uh, the steel industry is really crucial for all of the building that America is doing in the Gilded Age. This is the age of the skyscraper and all of these big bridges that are that are being built. So this is a really necessary ingredient. Uh, Andrew Carnegie, who we've talked about previously, he's definitely this Horatio Alger type of person. So this is a rags to riches story. You know, he comes as a very poor immigrant from Scotland. Uh, and in 1883, he's worked his way up and he purchases the homestead mill. So he will come to completely dominate this industry. Uh, it's important to note that the workers at Homestead are living a very different life than Andrew Carnegie is. Uh, they are living in squalor, they're living in these kind of lean-to houses that when it rains there's raw sewage that's coming into their homes and, and things like that. So it's a very difficult life that, that they're going on here. And so when Carnegie buys this mill, he has inherited a union, and he is not a fan of unions, even if publicly he's going to be talking about how important labor unions are for the efficiency of workforces. Privately, he does not agree with that one iota. He has dismantled unions and most of the rest of his steel mill, so this is uh, well documented uh, for sure. Um, so and important to note too that working in steel mills is pretty brutal. Uh, work. Very long hours, very dangerous conditions. They're making about $2.50 a day for 10 to 12 hour shifts. A lot of people are comparing Pittsburgh at this point to hell all of the time because of what steel does to the atmosphere, uh, that it just really takes over the skyline here. So that's kind of the background here on Andrew Carnegie and how he comes to the steel mill. Henry Clay Frick, who you can see uh, to the right of him there. Um, so he is his right hand man. So Andrew Carnegie for most of this strike is gonna be off on a fishing trip in, in the Scot Scotland, Scottish Highlands. And so uh, Henry Clay Frick is really gonna be the one that is, is making the decisions here, but they are in regular communication. So the union in which that he has inherited is the Amalgamated Association of the Iron and Steel Workers, so known as the AA Union. So they're gonna have a mix of skilled and unskilled workers. So they form in 1876. Um, they're a pretty well-known union. They've got about 20,000 union members nationwide. It does impact town leadership as well. So the mayor is John McLucky. So that's him on the bottom right there. Uh, he had worked in steel as well before getting into politics. So this was going to be a really big deal for the entire town. So not just uh, the workers. So enter the negotiation phase. So the contract is set to expire at the end of June in 1892. And this is kind of the moment that Carnegie and Frick have been waiting for. So this is gonna be the point where they are gonna break the union. So they enter in, into these negotiations, uh, but he has zero intention. Uh, to compromise here. Important to note that behind the scenes, he set up all of this fencing around the mill. He set up these basically watchtower spots where you've got people with uh, weapons out there. So the mill is renamed Fort Frick. So that's important context for what goes on here. So negotiations do not go well, as, as you can tell here. Um, so Frick is gonna present a 22% wage cut. It is gonna be virtually impossible for any union to, to get anywhere uh, with that kind of, those kinds of tactics. And so the lockout will start. So important to note, a lockout is different from a strike. So a lockout is an action that the management is taking. So Frick is locking the workers out. So the idea here is that you lock them out and then you bring in scabs. So you bring in your replacement workers uh, who are typically not union people. Uh, so that's what's going on there. So in June 28th. Now the workers are gonna respond with a strike. So it's gonna be a, a unanimous vote. And so they will vote to strike. So uh, the town is very invested in what's going on here. So there's a lot of sympathy uh, for the workers that have been locked out. So you've got a lot of people that are now ringing, uh, have created kind of this human chain around the mill to make sure that Carnegie doesn't hire scabs uh, to come in. So this is setting up a standoff. 
So Frick is going to bring in 300 Pinkertons. So the Pinkertons were actually a detective agency, but they were also kind of a private army for hire. So Frick is bringing them in to break through this ring of striking workers so that the scabs can gain access uh, to the mill. And so part of what he's doing is he's bringing these Pinkertons by boat, by barge, uh, in the cover of night. Um, but because McLucky and Hugh O'Donnell, the head of the union, they know exactly what he's doing. So they are ready for the Pinkertons when they arrive. And so there is a violent clash uh, between the two groups. And so nine workers are actually killed uh, on that first day uh, when they clash. So there'll be three Pinkertons that are killed as well. So it's gonna be a huge battle that's going to ensue here. So by the end of the day, the Pinkertons will surrender. They actually had a lot of trouble surrendering. They were kind of constantly waving this white flag and the, uh, the strikers would shoot the flag down and, and that sort of thing. So when they do finally surrender, there's kind of this gauntlet that happens here. So they surrender and then as they are trying to leave, they're being attacked uh, by, by the striking workers. Now this does look like victory for our workers, but unfortunately it is gonna be short-lived. Important to note that this is hitting the, the news media for sure and US opinion is divided. Uh, a lot of people are on the side of the workers, but some of them think they have gone a little bit too far because now at this point they've broken through the fencing and so they have broken onto private property and they've retaken the mill. Uh, so some people think that they've gone too far at this point. So the strike will continue on and then eventually the mayor and the governor are going to have to work together and say, okay, we need to bring some, some order to the town. So the state intervenes, they're going to bring in the state militia uh, on July 12th and the mill and the town will both be placed under martial law. So calm is, is found, uh, so things are getting somewhat back, back to normal, uh, but this also means that Frick is able to reopen the mill and he's going to reopen the mill with non-union workers. He does give the striking workers an option to return with a couple of conditions. They can never join the union again and they have to be able to prove that they weren't involved in the clash uh, with the Pinkertons. Important to note that sympathy strikes are breaking out at other Carnegie mills uh, as well. And then everything just goes completely wrong for the, the striking workers. So as we've seen already from things like the Haymarket Affair that the labor union movement has already been associated with things like anarchy. And so there's a man that arrives, his name is Alexander Berkman, and he believes that violence is necessary for change. So he bursts into uh, Frick's office, he's wielding a pistol, he gets off a couple of shots, he takes out a knife, he has stabbed uh, Frick. Uh, Frick is uh, hit twice in the neck, uh, but he lives. Uh, he reportedly kept working, told the doctors to uh, just operate on him because he still had work to do. He didn't use any kind of anesthesia uh, or anything like that. So this changes his role. He now goes from the evil villain here uh, to the sympathetic hero. And this is really the end of the strike uh, for the workers. So your next step is to be going into uh, this video clip. Uh, that is in the PowerPoint. So um, just go ahead and take a look at the last 10 minutes. So that'll kind of wrap up the after effects of this strike. Uh, if you really want some more information, because this is a pretty fascinating story, um, feel free to watch the entire thing if you want to. So it's from a series called 10 Days That Unexpectedly Changed America.